Welcome back. Um, this is problem two of the 2016 released free response questions. Um, we're doing this to really make sure that you guys understood what was expected you get of you during the AP exam. And um, we have hit another string problem. So string problem number two. Um, last time we talked about problem number one. On this one, we're going to be doing um, a little a couple of things about log messages. I'm going to show you guys multiple ways of solving this um, because I kind of felt like this particular problem was very, um, it, you had to know what College Board wanted you to do um, opposed to just using um, the language of Java because Java can do this question very, very easily. But I have a feeling that College Board wanted you to loop around and actually loop and find different pieces of information in there. And I'm going to show you how to do both. So I'm going to start with the college board way. So um, let's take a let's take a look. We're going to be scrolling down to number two and let me get out one. Okay. So this uh, uh, question involves two classes that are used to uh, process log messages. Here's a list. Now you can look at real here of a client, a colon, a security alert. Cool. A uh, web server colon. Okay. So I'm looking at these messages. I'm thinking Okay, it's not that important. Okay, log messages have the format. Okay, machine ID colon description. Cool, and it describes and it's pretty pretty easy. One's the machine ID, one's the description. Easy. Uh, exactly one colon appears in the message. That is a big thing. So I know that there's only one colon and it separates it. Perfect. There is no blanks on either immediately before or after the colon. That's also kind of important. Okay, so now we have the log message. I actually uh, rewrote this particular part. So I already have uh, um, this in Eclipse. So let's take a look at this. Write the constructor log message class. It must initialize the private data object so that machine ID returns the machine part message and get description returns the description part of the message. Okay, so the way I think College Board would want you guys to do this one is you, you need to look for the uh, index value of the colon. Now, I believe we can do this. Message dot get or index of, I think we can do it this way. Okay, and then we could actually do machine ID equals message dot substring and we're going to go from zero to the index and then we're going to do for the description equals message dot substring and we don't actually need an ending substring because it's everything after it. But we could do index plus one, I believe. I may need plus two, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's plus one. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, it's it's 11 o'clock at night, so I'm actually getting very tired. So I'm sorry if that's wrong. If, if it is, I'll include a little clip. Just let me know. So anyway, I could do it this way. That would be a really easy way of doing it, but I generally don't like working with substring, um, and I would have done it a completely different way. And I would be using the dot split method. Okay, so the way I would do this is I would create an array of strings, and let's call this args. Not args. Why am I doing that? Ari. And we're going to be using Ari, and then we're going to do message dot split, and I'm going to be using colon here. I could use any regex uh, regular expression in there, but I'm just looking for a colon. If I have a colon, I'm going to split the array. Perfect. So what this is going to do is I can just do machine ID equal to Ari zero for machine ID. And for the description, Ari1. 
But this, but I don't believe split is part of the AP subset. So there's a possibility that you might get it wrong. Um, you might get points taken off for this. I'm not 100% sure. I'll look at the rubric when it comes out. But again, they came out this week uh, today. But this is my first. This is the way I would want to do this particular problem if I saw this and it was the challenge that I was going to be doing. Because split makes a lot of sense in my mind of let's split the array. Plus, it's going to become very helpful in the next part. So let's take a look real quick. Next part. Okay. Write the log me uh, log message method contains word which. Uh, returns true if the description in the log message properly contains a given keyword. And they give you a lot of information about this and um, they look at the descriptions here, but this right here is what really helps me out. Okay, these work. Disk, I see disk here, I see disk here. Okay, I, and I see disk here, I see disk here. So it's all by itself. Capitalization doesn't matter if it's disk three, it doesn't count. So it can't be inside of a word or anything else like that. Now, this makes it a little bit more difficult, but honestly, this is how I would do it. I would then, I would also create another split. So we're gonna do not the keyword, but the description. Okay, dot split. And this time I'm going to split by spaces. Now this will separate everything by spaces because we've been told that there'll be nothing but spaces or the end of that line or the beginning of the line on any of, um, on any of the ones that do work. So by putting those spaces, we'll separate it and actually um, trim off all these things and separate everything by words. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to loop over this. So we're going to do for string s r e and if s dot equals keyword, we're going to return true. If we go through this entire thing, we're going to return false. So that's the main idea behind this is I'm just looking through each element and just checking to see each one. I've trimmed off all the data here. Now, I don't know if College Board would reward all, prob uh, all points because I did use split um, to really trim my data. but. If I was going to be doing this, and if I was going to be solving this problem in, in a real life situation, again, I would let the Java API really help me out. So if there's something that you learned, split is a great way. Um, and hopefully I'm letting you guys know that there are other ways of solving it. And this not might not be the intended way of the author of the particular problem to particularly solve it. So you could lose points on the rubric, especially if they say loop through this or um, find where the colon is and stuff like that. So just giving you guys a heads up, this is the way I would, I would solve this particular problem. So that's pretty easy. So now let's look at part C. And part C is pretty cool because it all that does is it determines if a keyword is in the, or we have a list of messages, and we then check to see if a keyword's in a particular message, and then we remove that message from the array, which isn't too hard to do. So let's take a look at this. We have a message list already, um, and remove me a message is what we're gonna be working on, okay? We do need to return a list of all the removed ones, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a log message and I'm going to call it ands for the deleted ones really. Um, new array list log message. Put that in there. Now I think I just need that. Okay, so we create an answer there. I'm going to return ands and I'm just going to keep on working in the middle of this, so that's not a bad idea. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to loop through the messages. So int i equals zero. Well, i is less than message list dot size i plus plus. Now the next thing I'm after I check to see if that is luckily I have this really cool method in this that says contains word. So all I have to do is loop through these and just check. So if message list dot um, get i. So now I just have to do is contains word keyword. So if it contains the keyword, all I would need to do is remove it. So we're going to do ands.add. So we're going to add this in first, message uh, list.get i. We're going to add that in. We're going to do message list.remove i. But since we don't want to skip over things, we need to go back one. Um, this way we counterbalance the increment later on. Um, otherwise we would be skipping each part. So that's what we're gonna be doing there is we remove um, an item and then we, and, but we add it to the answer. So let's make sure that we did everything correctly for this one. Everything's going to be not null, which is okay finds everything there. So I believe that's it for this particular problem. Um, yeah, honestly, I felt like this problem was very, very short and very, very doable by most of my students. So, um, but it is a little bit more challenging than just the straight up array problems. But hopefully you guys got this problem, got five, five or more points on it. And um, hopefully I'll see you guys next time when I'll explain number three. Bye, guys.